I've been camping in freezing cold weather countless times over the past several years and learn new things every single time I go. And every time I learn something, I think, man, I wish I would have known that sooner. So in this video, I'm gonna pass on some of the things I wish I would have known sooner about cold weather camping. I know what you're thinking. You've already done this video, Dan. No, I have not. I've not done this video. This video is gonna be totally different than the last time I did a Vime Vimeo, a video <laughs> similar to this. Uh, it was in front of a fire pit that was extremely smoky. And it was so smoky that I got like several comments on how smoky it was. So because of that, East Oak actually sent me this fire pit, which is actually smokeless. And so more on that later. So there's a lot of videos online about how to stay warm winter camping and cold weather camping. Um, so I did my very best to try to come up with some things that you probably haven't heard before. Uh, if you're a hardcore cold weather camper or just like a YouTube like backpacking channel junkie, you may or may not have heard some of these things, but I've got some things here that I think are probably gonna help you out, especially if you are really concerned about being ice cold at camp or in your tent while you're sleeping. So first off, something I wish I definitely would have known sooner is what type of tent I needed to go winter camping. So there's really two types of tents out there. There's a double wall and there's a single wall tent. The double wall tent is essentially exactly that. It's two walls. It's got an inner net portion and it has also a rain fly that goes over the top of it. And then you have a single wall tent, which is really just a one single piece of fabric. And the biggest difference and why that's important is because a double wall tent is going to be the tent that's going to reduce condensation inside of your tent. A single wall tent is gonna have a ton of condensation. So like when you're inside of the tent and you're warm, but the outside air is really cold, it's gonna create a ton of moisture inside of the tent. Why is that a problem in the winter? Well, everything on the inside of your tent is gonna get wet and when things get wet and it gets cold it gets really 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 cold for you inside that tent so it would be really nice to have known to use out the gate a double wall tent consistently for winter camping now look i totally get it for you hikers out there who like to do like actual miles in the winter time you're probably going to want a single wall tent it's not the end of the world if you do have a single wall tent in the winter time you just really stay away from the outside of the tent and you can always wipe down the interior the other thing about your tent is you want to use a small tent. The smaller the tent, the less heat you have to make inside of the tent to heat up the interior of the tent. You're going to be a lot warmer. When you're inside of that small tent, you're going to want to ventilate that tent properly. So um, you're not going to be able to get rid of all the condensation, but most tents have some sort of a vent on the inside of the tent to be able to release some of that moisture to reduce the condensation inside of the tent. I mean, you're not going to be able to get rid of all of it, but even if you have all of the zippers wide open, you're still likely going to get some sort of condensation inside of the tent, but at least you can mitigate it with ventilating and opening up the tent a little bit. Oh, and just a little bit of a tip for where you're setting up your tent in the wintertime. Try to set up out of the wind. The wind makes things miserable in the wintertime. Just way too much wind makes way too much cold. And then just some simple, easy things for you when you're setting up your tent, as far as a dumper wall or a single wall tent. Um, make sure you pack down the snow before you set up your tent. So just stomp it out if you don't have like a shovel or something because you have thicker snow and that's gonna create a lot more water when you're laying on top of it. It's gonna melt a lot easier. So if you pack that down, it's not gonna melt as much, which means that you're gonna be less wet when you're laying inside of your tent. And then also think about the morning time when you wake up. Do you wanna be warm in the morning? Yes, I bet you do because the morning time is actually the coldest part of the day. It gets the coldest right around three, four o'clock in the morning. So you'll see that as you look at the temperature forecast, it's gonna start to dip as the morning goes on. And then it starts to warm up maybe seven, eight o'clock in the morning. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you set up your tent where there's gonna actually be exposure to the sun. So think about that. Where's the sun gonna come up? Where am I gonna set up my tent? And is that light gonna be able to hit my tent and warm me up in the morning? And an app that I use is called Skyview. Uh, helps me kind of determine where the uh, sun is actually gonna come up in the morning. It's a pretty cool app. It works without actually any cell service. So that's nice as well. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Oh, by the way, uh, throughout the course of this entire video, have you noticed that there has been absolutely zero smoke coming out of this uh, fire pit? Have you noticed that? Uh, no, but I'm glad there's not. It'll be good for the edit. So the reason that this stove is smokeless is because of what's called the Venturi effect. That essentially means that it's sucking in more oxygen to more swiftly feed the burning process. There is a secondary combustion that the pan stove creates. It's able to achieve a smokeless burn as small particles that form into smoke are burnt completely. High fire technology significantly increases the efficiency of a secondary burn. Pan stove also comes with a removable ashtray and a long hook that can easily take out the ashtray. 
So like other stoves, you'd have to worry about all the ash in there blocking all the vent holes. With this stove, take the pan tray out, dump it out, and you're good to go. The pan stove is 100% stainless steel and comes in three sizes. 17 inches, 21 inches, and 29 inches, and also two colors. So this one is the 29 inch stove. I like this one because I could fit larger logs in it, but the smaller ones are nice because they're a lot more portable. And if you're planning on buying this stove, I would do it today, Black Friday, because it is their biggest sale of the year. You get 30% off. East Oak is having their biggest sale of the year on Amazon. Definitely go check out the link in the description. You'll save at least 30% on these awesome pan stoves. Okay, you've heard of this before. Uh, probably from me and many other YouTubers at Nauseam about filling up a Nalgene with boiling water or hot water and then you can stick it in the foot box of your sleeping bag to like warm you up. But, I bet you haven't heard of this, you can actually dry out wet gear with this. So this is a great way to do that. You can also fill this up with boiling hot water, make sure it's nice and hot, and then you can lay your socks or any other things that you want on top of this to dry it out for morning. It's a lot easier than having that cold air try to dry out whatever's wet. And you can also stick this into the inside of your sleeping bag and then throw that wet gear in there as well. And it will create like this oven and that will help dry out all of that wet gear for the morning as well. Oh, and then also, it's always better to use a water bottle in the winter time instead of like a bladder, like a water bladder, like you, the ones you put inside of your backpack and it's got the tube coming out, the bite valve and all that stuff. Because those, um, if it gets below freezing, those tubes, <laughs> I forget what the tubes are called, and the bite valves can actually freeze up if they're full of water. So I like to bring just water bottles in the winter time, especially Nalgene, because you can put the boiling water in here and it's not gonna melt through it. Another thing, since, by the way, I kind of feel like ever since I've talked about this in other videos at Nauseam that many other YouTubers are now starting to talk about this quite a bit. <laughs> but it's a great uh, tip, and if you haven't watched any of these other videos, it's gonna help you right now. Um, you don't wanna believe temperature ratings on any product at all. So uh, your sleeping bags or your sleeping pads especially. So there is like a standard now. It's an EN rating if you're from uh, Europe or if you're now in the United States, it's an ISO rating. These are ratings that the companies use to rate sleeping bags, but then sleeping pads are rated with R value. Why is that a big deal? Well. Companies don't have to use these standards if they don't want to. So whatever the rating is on the bag doesn't mean that that bag is actually gonna keep you that warm. It may be the survival rating of the sleeping bag. It may be the transition rating of the sleeping bag. It may be the comfort rating of the sleeping bag. You really don't know until you dig into the website of what that rating actually is. So my recommendation to you is if you don't understand what any of that stuff means, if you're like, ISO what and EN what, I just don't get it, like R value, what is all that stuff? What I would just say to you is whenever you see a temperature rating on any product whatsoever, do not take it at face value. If it's a sleeping bag that says it's gonna keep you warm to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, know that it's probably really only gonna keep you warm maybe to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, more than likely 35 degrees Fahrenheit. And then as far as a sleeping pad, know that the R value is what's going to tell you what that warmth of that sleeping pad is. You want something that's gonna be a high R value in the wintertime, something over 4.0 is what I recommend for wintertime. Now the pad that I use is pretty expensive. It's a 6.9 R value pad, which is really warm. I can lay it directly on snow to keep you warm. I'll put the link to that in the description below, but it's also very, very, very expensive. So just keep that in mind. If you don't wanna spend a ton of money, you can always double up your sleeping pads to kind of keep that warmth underneath you because your ground underneath you is the devil. It is the enemy. It is the thing that sucks the warmth out of you. One more quick tip about your sleeping bag. Um, if it does get wet, from you inside of it being you know, warm and the condensation happens. In the morning, you can actually take your sleeping bag, turn it inside out to dry it out to just lay it in the sun. If there is sun, I know a lot of times in the wintertime there isn't sun, but lay it out in the sun and that will definitely help that out. Another thing I wish I would have known about gear in the cold weather camping was to actually bring some sort of a stool or chair. Um, it is not fun to sit on a frozen rock or a frozen stump. I will leave it at that. And the last thing that I would probably say that I wish I would have known, honestly, about um, winter camping and cold weather camping, especially if you're planning on cooking a lot or if you are especially, especially planning on boiling snow for water, is to bring way more fuel than you think. So those fuel canisters, uh, like this one here, 
would probably last me four or five days in spring, summer, fall camping because um, I'm only just boiling water that's already melted. But in the winter time, you don't realize how much snow you actually need to boil a cup of water. You're gonna have to fill up your pot probably three different times with snow to the brim to get a cup of water. And that's a lot of fuel coming out of this. So I would say two to three times what you normally would use on any other backpacking trip or any other camping trip is about what you're gonna need if you're planning on boiling snow just for like two days. All right, hope that helps you guys out. Hope that the next trip you go on, you're nice and warm and you tell all your friends how warm you are and it's because you watched this video. That'd be nice. <laughs> tell them to subscribe to my channel too. That'd be great. And uh, like this video and we'll see you in the next one.